there's forced begging. I don't know if you guys saw Slumdog Millionaire, but you remember the little kids? They had to go out on the streets every day and beg. That's forced begging. Do they want to do that? Probably not. But they were runaways, and they got money, and they got food, and they got someone who claimed to love them. So that's why some people go into forced begging or are being forced to beg. Um, another big reason why people are trafficked is for organ trade. There's nearly 15,000 kidneys trafficked every year. And they can go up to as much as $16,000 a kidney. So if you're making $2 in your third world country, or you could sell your kidney for $2,000, I mean, they sell it for 16, you get 2,000, people see this as a win-win, and now you're having, you created a market. And now there's a market for organs, and everyone's trying to either steal you so they can take them, or they take them from you in your sleep, or they drug you, so, something will happen, they will take, your organs, whichever ones that they can take that are the most valuable. And, I mean, that's bad for the person, but it's also really bad for the, the person who's getting it. They don't know what they're getting. It could be infected. It could, it, it could be a myriad of things wrong with those organs. So we don't want to create a market for human parts and have people selling themselves, not just sex-wise, but to be actually physically selling yourself. I mean, that's, that's just, I think that goes against everything the UN stands for. But it all comes down to money. That's why people are being trafficked. The US approximates seven to 12 billion dollars as an industry globally, but Interpol puts it up higher at 19 billion dollars. If you got all the biggest companies in the US together, that doesn't total the human trafficking uh, industry. So I thought that was really staggering to say that Google and Amazon and CBS and ABC and all these really big companies, you put them all together, Facebook, and it's still not what people make selling other people. And that's just, that's just sad. But it's not just a global problem. Human trafficking happens within the U.S. all the time. There's nearly a quarter of a million American children, American children and youth trafficked within the US. And when I first heard that, I thought, well, that just seems like a lot of people. Why? Why is this happening? But you have these kids that run away from home, or these kids that get lost in the foster care system, and they just leave their houses. And you get, you, you know, you have, now you have this generation of children that are just wandering around, and all it takes is for one person to say, hey, I'll give you a place to stay, and I think you're cool, and they, they they trick them into thinking that you've got a family or I'll be your brother. And then before you know it, it's like, well, can you do this favor for me one time? I, we could really use the money. We could use the money to buy drugs or we could use the money to buy food or rent. And before you know it, now you're a professional prostitute or doing X, Y, and Z and you're being trafficked and you don't know it. So that's, that's pretty alarming. Um, as for intaking, from the US, we take in about 14,500 to 17,500 people into the country because we need cheap labor. And so some people think, hey, if I can make a buck, I can make a buck, I don't care where it comes from. Um, there's nearly 40,000 runaways at risk of sexual exploitation, and there's nearly a million runaways a year. That's a big number. And sadly, the average age of prostitution is 12 to 14. And if you think about how many children you have that are 12 to 14, or if you remember what you were doing at 12 to 14. When I was in 12, I was in middle school, and I did my homework, and I went to band, and I went home. I wasn't turning tricks on the street, and I would never think that any of my friends would do that. But to know that there's at least a quarter of a million kids who are my age, who were 12, and are out in the street selling their bodies, is just, it's too much to handle sometimes. So what did the US do? Well, the US signed the protocol. So they said, you know, we are going to take a stand on this. So under Chapter 77 of the US Code, um, Section 18, if a person is convicted of trafficking a person, trafficking a person kidnapping, attempted to kidnap, abusing or attempting, attempting to sexually abuse, you face life in prison. The U.S. is not taking, they're taking a very serious stand on this. If you traffic a person, 
you will go to jail for the rest of your life. So what does that do? That, that deters people from thinking, I could do, you know, five years, I could do ten years, but the rest of your life? And unfortunately, the Super Bowl seems to bring in a lot of sex trafficking. These people take advantage knowing that there's going to be over a thousand people in one space and they're from all over the world, not necessarily from the town that the Super Bowl is in. And in the Tampa uh, Super Bowl in 2009, there was at least 24 children that were recovered. Children, not teens, but children that were recovered from sex, sex traffickers. And recently in Dallas, uh, they took a really, really strong stance and they weren't going to have it. And they even had uh, training programs for their employees at the stadium. To, you know, to keep an eye out and to, to, to recognize what it might look like to have someone who's a sex trafficking victim. And uh, no figures yet, because it was just last weekend, but no figures yet on how many children they recovered. Mm, oh. uh, lastly, I, I thought it was, really, it was really sad to see who who are who are the people that are doing this trafficking? And I would assume it'd be men. That would just be my assumption. But really, women are doing it almost as equally as men are. And then I thought, well, why would they be doing that? And I, I could see that it'd be really easy for a woman to go up to a girl and say, you know, don't worry about him. I'll take care of you. Or this is just what we do. I'll, she takes on this mother figure. She gives this girl a false sense of security and then it looks like she has daughters, but really she's just running this giant sex trafficking gang, or they look like a family. So when they travel together, they look like a family. But now in other countries, they're making you, they want to see all the passports, and they want to see, you don't look like the parents, but let me, let me see your identification. And there's been lots of children that have been re recovered that way. But for some of these kids, you know, they didn't know who their parents were. They just called them mom and dad. And so they don't have anywhere to go. So now you have all these kids going into this system of lost children. And then what happens? They'd rather go back, back out on the streets. They don't want to live there. They're used to that life. So then they leave, and it's this vicious cycle. So there is a lot to be done. Although the UN has done a lot, there is still a lot more to be done in, you know, to make sex trafficking a thing of the past. Will that happen? I don't know. It's been happening since the beginning of time. And since the beginning of time, there's been slavery. So I think until the world stands together and takes a really firm stance on what it is to be a human trafficker and how to make it illegal, I think this might stay around at least for my lifetime. That's it. Questions or comments? You know, right now that there's a political divide about the efficacy of the UN around the world. Right. You know, that it seems like a great idea, the idealization. And I want to honor exactly what right. Eleanor Roosevelt's passion was for this. Uh, I think it, it stirs the hearts of all, all, all over the globe. And yet we realize that there's such dissension oftentimes to really progressing, you know, right. and actualized. Um, and there's the teeth behind you know, the idea to really make sure that these things are in operation and not just a great idea. Right. So um, do you have any comment about how we can somehow help support those efforts to make the UN's efficacy pattern a little more sustainable? Yeah.